Um, Steve Siegel is the vice president of Energy Security Group, but what he's really famous for, he was the guy that lit the fuse in the Department of Defense and the military services to get them interested in renewable energy with a focus on fuels initially. They expanded beyond that into other forms of technology. Steve? Thank you, Bill. I've got some slides here. Let's uh, see if I can work the system. The question is, or the hypothesis is, do renewable fuels contribute to U.S. national security? Again, that's a hypothesis. How do we know? What kinds of analysis and metrics do we use to measure that? Uh, I don't have the answer. But intuitively, as we discussed a few minutes ago, it seems to make sense that it's better to buy some fuel from a farmer up the street than it is to buy fuel from someone who wants to kill me. Okay, that's intuitive. But again, what kinds of analysis and metrics should be used to answer that or address that hypothesis? And what I'm going to talk about today is an overview of, of several efforts I've been involved with over the last few years and give you some examples that have touched upon this topic of energy and security and how you measure that relationship. First is country security related to energy. How so? Next point, full national level costs and benefits. What Mill just said and then some. So concur. That's a very, very key part of uh, what we need to do as far as increasing energy security. And then lastly, the, the focus on bioenergy to analyze the impacts of biofuels on country level factors to include national security factors. Now the next few slides, some of you may have seen some of them before, and uh, maybe you haven't. And uh, I just want to offer them up to uh, potentially add to your inventory of tools and data and the like as far as, again, the issue of energy security. This is the Pentagon's new map. Uh, inside, it's referred to, inside those lines, it's referred to as the non-integrated gap outside the functioning core. Uh, this was developed by Tom Burnett a few years ago. There are other maps like this, and they're kind of like those who have and those who have not. What's inside in the non-integrated gap are uh, those countries that, according to Barnett, have not been affected by globalization and those outside have been. And when I first saw that, I had just seen that week another slide. And it was the World at Night slide by NASA. And I said, gee, it looks real similar. So I did an overlay. No fancy analysis, but the correlation is there. Okay, those that have light and those that not. So it kind of gave me a, an, an inkling, again, not analysis, that there's some sort of relationship between security and energy. Okay. Another study that was done by USAID a few years back found that energy consumption has a positive effect on country security, increases the odds of peace. And how peace and security was measured was according to the Heidelberg Institute. And what that study again found statistically that there was a significant contribution of energy, that is, the more energy you produce and consume, the more likely you're going to be stable and secure as far as that country in terms of warfare and stress. 2005, 12 of the 13 countries in severe or war, I'm sorry, in severe crisis or war, had limited access to electric power. Again, a correlation there. So after looking at that, you get a kind of a feel that there's some sort of relationship again between energy and security. Uh, this is the MILT slide. This was from a year ago at a conference uh, where I presented uh, this slide, and I'm not trying to advocate any of the numbers per se in these clouds, but this is the idea of incorporating or addressing full costs and benefits as we evaluate energy. And I put the term externalities in quotes because I think it's important to get, up, get off the externalities, that is to make these kinds of costs and benefits of defense, environment, health, climate change, and put them in our business as usual on a recurring basis in the government as a leader, Department of Defense as a leader, so that we have the right metrics and analysis that we can agree upon that these very important factors, again, aren't regarded as ad hoc, but are very important kinds of costs and benefits that should be included in our planning and analysis and policy building. And this is not that far flung. These are the kinds of things that DOD is thinking about right now. 
BEAT, the Bioenergy Evaluation Tool. Uh, United Nations Foundation uh, recently sponsored an effort, it just started up, and that is to build a user-friendly quick turnaround analysis tool that evaluates the impacts, the country level, of bioenergy policies. And this is being done in Latin America and the Caribbean on a country level. So for example, in the case of El Salvador, they're about to implement an E10 policy next year, and they want to know how to implement that how to implement that policy, what kinds of pi price bans, things like that. So the kinds of impact factors that they want to know about as far as that policy, energy, food, environment, economics, they want that horizontal slice quantifiable to say, if I implement this policy, inversion of this policy, what are the likely impacts to my country in these areas? That's going to be demonstrated again in E10 by this coming March. And what this kind of leads to, in my mind at least, is that there's a need for, a, for an, an analytical framework of standards to reflect the value added of biofuels to sustainable U.S. energy security. That addresses the hypothesis I mentioned a few slides back. That is, for example, if you have a platinum rating, a high rating, okay, you might uh, be generating and allocating your biofuels with only renewables. So if you've got a high rating, like a lead concept, then you would get an incentive by the government for contributing to U.S. energy security. And that would be the basis, again, for allocating those kinds of benefits, which you mentioned a few minutes ago. Okay. So in a very quick way, what I'm trying to say here is, again, that the need for analysis, analysis and metrics, uh, I think, is very, very timely as energy security becomes more important uh, to be precise and accurate and also on a recurring basis to know how are we doing as far as biofuels and energy security because it changes every day, every year. So again, to establish a benchmark, see how we're doing and develop our policies, provide, provide incentives to encourage those kinds, and not just for biofuels, but energy in general that contribute to sustainable energy security. Thank you. <laughs>